workforce. Um, I'm only trying to touch on a few ideas here, but certainly in terms of recruitment, recruiting at colleges that do have large multicultural populations, doing outreach with PRSSA, that's the student group, um, recruiting multicultural students that major in communication or English or history of the social sciences, those are all recruiting techniques. Um, you could partner with groups such as the National Black Public Relations Society or the Hispanic Public Relations Society. You could advertise in the news media that reach those groups. And you can offer internship programs and mentoring programs for multicultural students and practitioners. So that's all under the category of recruitment. In terms of retaining the multicultural practitioners, make diversity recruitment part of your organization's stated objectives and create a work environment for them. And educate your supervisors about the need to foster good working relationships with everyone in the company. Make human resources accountable for diversity recruitment and demonstrate a commitment to multicultural employees by making sure that they are receiving comparable pay and considerations for advancement within the company and establish a good mentoring program. These are just a few ideas for you. Um, the suggestions for multicultural practitioners, um, find a mentor in the company if you're uh, in a large company in particular. Observe what makes other employees successful and emulate those qualities. Um, demonstrate your value to the company as with any PR practitioner. Demonstrate your value to the company through your sense of professionalism and productivity and that holds for anybody. Um, and again, as with anybody who's looking for a, a job, do your homework on a particular company before you're interviewing or before you accept a job with the company. Understand what that company's policies are for advancement within the company, how long it takes to advance through the ranks and so forth. And finally, seek additional support outside the company through other pre-R practitioners, again, such as the Black Public Relations Society of America. These are all good ways of increasing diversity in the workforce. And again, I just feel like I'm just touching on, you know, many, many issues here. But the Public Relations Society of America is very concerned at the national level with diversity. It has launched a diversity initiative, uh, and it does have a job center. And if you're interested in more information on that, you can just get on PRSA's website, which is prsa.org, O-R-G. And the Buffalo Niagara chapter um, is going to be talking to us today as well about it. And uh, in a few minutes after we just have a little bit of a break, we'll take a five-minute break, we're going to be talking more about what we are trying to do here locally as well. So any questions? Okay. Five-minute break, and then we'll come back and we'll have our guest speakers. Well, it's uh, great to be here. It's, uh, you know, your good fortune. If you had been here a year ago, you would have had me for this class. So uh, I'm sure you're better off with Dr. Silverman. Uh, you know, it sounds kind of impressive to be the president, but, you know, it's really not. I mean, for example, for $5, I'd let any of you have it. So, you know. Um, well, I, uh, I'd like to begin uh, by asking you to remember a, uh, a time that is probably, for most of you, a, a distant memory. The mid-90s. Now, you were probably, most of you were in grade school, I'm imagining, which really ticks me off, you miserable wretches. I was in college, and, uh, you know, Bill Clinton was president. Melrose Place could be found on prime time and not just on the soap network. I mean, it was a great time. But there was a, uh, there was a political and social trend at the time uh, known as the phenomenon of the angry white male. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. They probably weren't talking about it in second grade. But, you know, uh, the idea was that some guys were kind of steamed because they felt they were losing their power. And uh, uh, the economy was just starting to take off again, but it had been in a bit of a slump. And so there was a lot of economic anxiety in the country. And lower income white men in certain areas of the country believed women were rising too far, too fast. They thought that affirmative action was threatening their jobs. They thought too many ethnic immigrants we're stealing opportunities from Americans. 
They felt environmental laws were sending jobs overseas. They felt too much taxpayer money was being spent on a welfare system that rewarded women for not working. And they felt that most of those women were minorities. And I sort of sat back and watched this phenomenon. I was certainly sympathetic to men who had lost their jobs, but I disagreed with their premise. I certainly disagreed and continue to disagree that white men are an endangered species. And certainly also disagree that white men can create more opportunity for themselves by denying it to others. That seems to me a profoundly un-American idea. Well, here we are. It's a decade later. Now you're in college. And some of these disputes have been settled. But still there are people, many of them talking heads uh, on radio or on television, who attack equal opportunity. And they mock political correctness as some last gasp of a failed socialism. Well, I'm not a socialist, but I'm here to tell you that I believe in political correctness. And I believe in respecting diversity because it's the right thing to do. And it's the right thing to do in three particular ways that I'll touch on. And I'm not going to talk very long, which is probably a shock to Jason who's in my class. Um, I'm going to, that's why I'm sort of sticking to a script, which is also unusual for me, because I want to get through this and turn it over to people who have more wisdom to share with you than I. But I want to just touch on three particular areas, and that is that uh, diversity is good in terms of communication, it's good in terms of business, and it's good in terms of, of our humanity. So first, the communication part. You know, adapting to differences is what we do as communicators. That's what we're about. If you've studied communication theory, you know the famous Shannon and Weaver model of communication that shows a sender and a receiver and a channel and a meaning and a message, and there's encoding and all of this other stuff that, uh, you know, some of us pretend to understand. And somewhere in there, there's this whole idea of noise. And reducing noise is the job of the artful communicator. To me, that's what cross-cultural communication is about. That's the heart of communication theory. And maybe that's why I recently heard a national PRSA leader say that PR is the business of peacemaking. I believe that. At its best, PR is about creating dialogue and resolving conflict. It's about two-way communication that results in mutual understanding it's not simply cynical one-way communication that sells soup or soap or whatever stuff you may be looking to get rid of. At our best, we use the tools of communication to bring people together around a common cause. And to keep that charge, we have to respect and understand the diversity of our key publics. I don't know if you've learned yet about P.T. Barnum. Well, if we don't respect and understand diversity, we become a new generation of P.T. Barnums. The public be damned. We don't pay attention to the wants, interests, and needs of our publics. We just shamelessly shill the latest product. And I don't think that's what most of us are here for. I certainly hope not. So that's the communication part. Second, there's diversity as part of doing business in this global village of ours. And I believe that Dr. Silverman talked earlier about the reality that there are smart business people today who didn't used to pay a lot of attention to diversity who now realize they can't afford to neglect it. There's money to be made and there's prosperity to be shared when we relate to people across races and ethnicities, religions and cultures, generations and physical abilities, genders and sexual orientations. And communicators